Hello Internet, welcome back to Bunny Hall Making a Life by the Sea. And today I thought I would take you onto our beach and we can do some light beach combing. And as the sun keeps going in and out, I'm not sure if we're supposed to have rain today. I would love rain, the gardens would love rain, but probably doesn't make for great filming. But I thought we'd do some quick beach combing, which I usually like to get down on the beach at least once or twice a day just to have a pick over and see what treasures there are. And then uh, maybe I'll show you my hydrangeas which are beginning to bloom. So before the weather uh, breaks, let's get down to the beach. So I do like to uh, beach comb pretty much daily. I mean, there are some days I don't go down, but, I, but come on, <laughs> we live on the sea and have our own private beach. It'd be pretty silly of me not to uh, go down. So let's head down and see what we can find. Another project, which I can make into a video, is you can see all the bittersweet. The bittersweet is my, definitely my nemesis here at Bunny Hall. I'm always hacking it back. Now, of course, in autumn it's wonderful to have strands and strands of it to make beautiful autumnal wreaths, but when you live with it and it takes over everything, it's not good. Like, for example, this is a little, we call it the conch shell tree. It's a piece of driftwood we put here. And usually when we're down here, whenever we find a conch, we like to hang a, we like to hang conchs on them. But now look, I'll have to cut this off because this bittersweet, just since this last winter, has taken over it again. Of course, I could leave it in this fall. It would be quite pretty. So we'll see. Maybe I actually will leave that and see how it looks in the fall with the orange bittersweet berries. Anyway, but see how it's starting to take over our path, so I have to cut that back. And look, it's even trying to sneak into the kayak. So, and this is the salté I spoke about prior uh, in another post I think I mentioned, which uh, washes ashore and dries out and it is a great mulch. So let's go this way. This is towards the beach in front of our boathouse. And as you can see, look at how we just have shell those little shells i use in landscaping they are everywhere and i'm always amazed by see these little look at this little plant it is a natural or native succulent it has the waxy leaves the fact that it grows in this dry salty sand sometimes i'll take little samplings of those and put them in my garden uh, normally you have to get permission to take things from the wild but as this is our private beach and i'm only moving at about 15 feet <laughs> Uh, it doesn't seem to really matter, and there's, I never take the entire plant. Now, some days I'm beachcombing, like last week I found that amazing um, buoy that has the red, or the orange circle, that kind of looks a little bit like the Japanese flag. But even things like this, like look, I think this is really cool. And you can cut the tip of that and make a really impressive quill to write with or draw with. Um, I should do a video of cutting a quill and just doing a quick ink drawing. That'll actually be fun. Now down on this end, as we get closer to the boathouse, look, this is always a great spot I come. Because this area is particularly more open, the, the rocks aren't as prevalent here. So look at the amount of, of uh, shells we get. Sometimes there's little random things, like this, a comb. That might, might look silly, but honestly, probably will clean that off and then um, I'll use that I use combs in my hair and in fact I should do it in my next video to prove I used it oh what's this I mean often it's garbage and things we need to pick up beach combing but what is this is it a hairbrush or something I could actually use let's see this is oh you know what now this this isn't a treasure, like something I want to put on the windowsill, like beautiful shells or a buoy. But that's a practical brush. Look how strong that is. I could use that. So that's going in the collection for today. And then um, over there is, the, this is more of our beach here, before it turns into our, our neighbor's beach. And you can see our old dinghy, which we haven't used in years. It's from when we used to have a sailboat. We used to have a 30-foot sailboat. We used to keep it moored right out there where you can see that sailboat. However, one, that was before we were the caretakers of Bunny Hall. We used to live in the boathouse, 
the apartment of the boathouse, which you can just see a sliver of it there. It needs so much work. Um, so we had the leisure and the funds to keep a boat. Now, since we are the caretakers of Bunny Hall, <laughs> every penny we have goes back into Bunny Hall. And it's never for anything exciting like glorious new drapes or lovely polished wood floors. It's always, we have to have the new pipes put in from 80 years ago because there's no water coming into the house or the stove quit working. But again, I'm not complaining because I'd rather have a rundown old house that needs new windows, but still get to have this be my morning stroll, wouldn't you? And, uh, but anyways, oh, and these rusty tracks are actual railroad tracks that were put in by Nate's grandparents. They used to keep two big sailboats in that building up there, which now has no boats in it. And we used it, uh, there is a giant engine in there that would pull the boats in and out of the water. So this was how they would launch in the spring. And in the autumn, they would put the boat on here, sail it to here. It would hook onto these old tracks, which weren't old at the time, and be hauled up by a loud, loud 1950s car engine up into the boathouse. And that's where they would work on it through the season. Um, so, yeah, so I don't want to spend tons of time down here. I just want to show my uh, little beach combing, and those are the little treasures we found so far. That's not too bad. A comb, a brush, and a feather for art. I'll take it. As I said, some days I find really amazing things, and some days it's just interesting shells or rocks. Like, I mean, there are thousands of oyster shells around here, but sometimes, like, this just caught my... Oops, I'll get this down. This just caught my eye. That's just a really particularly pretty oyster shell. So I might put that with today's collection. And yes, so, and of course we can walk that way. Our beach extends a bit more and then it's our neighbor's beach that way, but it's still a private point and you can walk around the edge, which one day I should take us on a long walk around there. And you can get to our wood across the road from that direction. So that could be an interesting walk. Also things like this, obviously driftwood. Now look at this lovely piece of driftwood. Now, that would just be cool with something painted on it, a sailboat or, I mean, not to be cliche, but, or a fun sign like private garden. <laughs> and all of these little shells, which are like the mother of pearl of quahog shells, I believe, or oysters, I'm not sure. I think they come out of quahog shells. But see how they're that pretty golden opalescent color? My sister-in-law usually collect these in the summer, and we try to see if we can fill a jar by the end of the summer. But yeah, I just wanted to share a, of a morning. The fun to just come down here and stroll and see what we can find another giant piece of driftwood there so I will probably share that later and um, oh I know I wanted to show you my hydrangeas in the shade garden in the front <laughs> unlike poor bunny's hydrangea which is now completely in the hot baking sun it doesn't even have a blossom on it but my hydrangeas are beginning to bloom out front so let's go take a look at my hydrangeas so geez today's video might be beachcombing and hydrangeas. <laughs> so let's go check those out. Ah, oh bittersweet. And these are just a couple of beach chairs. We keep plastic Adirondack chairs usually on the ready. So when we wanna come down and have a sit, we just drag them down, set them up, enjoy the time and then come back. Sometimes in the summer I keep them set up for the summer but it depends because sometimes the tide knocks them over anyway, but that's why I don't put anything too precious on the beach. Now, one day my goal and dream is, you can't tell here, but in the spring, this overgrown spot right here is an open path. That's a level between our beach and our top lawn that runs all the way along the house down to the boathouse. And I used to use it as a path to go to where I use my studio, but I no longer use that space currently. But in the spring, we always mean to clear it more and hack it back. But would you believe we could walk through here this spring? These wild roses and this bittersweet is just from this spring because we haven't had time 
to attend to it. So this autumn project may be clearing this back when the leaves are gone. And I'm actually considering getting a really heavy duty landscape fabric and landscaping the entire pathway and start mulching it every year. So that way, even if we don't get to anything, at least we can walk through it. So that'll be another project. And again, this is me telling myself in the future, don't forget to do that project. Let's go back up the stairs. So yeah, let's go around to the front and look at the hydrangeas. Actually, I wanna share some of my seashell gathering with some music set to it. And in for a penny, in for a pound, I might as well include looking at the hydrangeas in that little musical interlude as well. Cue music. Now let's look at hydrangea. So let's start here. This is my main shade border. I really started to beef up last uh, summer, last spring. And so here we can see some of the hydrangeas. This is my favorite, the Bloomstruck, which actually blooms purple in our uh, blue loving hydrangea soil. Now the funny story is on this side of our little front kitchen step, these are at this height. At this side, these tower over them and these traditional Nico blue, which are lovely, are already blooming. Why, you may ask? <laughs> and the question, the answer is, see those old windows? The, second, the first window there is in our laundry room. And as part of our water situation that began a year ago, we couldn't use the septic for the washing machine drain. So we started snaking it out the window. And I suddenly had an aha moment that I thought, even when we get the water fixed, why would I waste our water into the septic system when I can water my front flowers. And if some of you may be thinking, ah, but the soap. Well, I use natural uh, soaps. In fact, when I wash my husband's things, I use natural soap. When I wash my own things, I don't use any soap because I find my clothes get just as clean with hot water. So that's the trick to why these hostas <laughs> and these ferns are so much further along than these exact same ones here. Now, let's move on down to, here is one of my Bloomstrucks starting to really put its color on. I mean, look at that color. So again, I believe if your soil doesn't give you blue hydrangeas, which our soil, the Cape Cod soil is known for giving the most striking blue flowers, this one will give you purple 
in that case. However, I have heard that if it is not in the right soil, you will get more pink purple. You still will get a shade of purple. But see how ours has much more of that blue tone through it? So I just love this color. So I have, every time I find those, I get them. Here's one here. Now this one got a little bit dry back here, so it isn't sending up blooms. Because again, we've been hardly, haven't been able to water much at all because of our water being shut off and being connected to the boathouse. So now, just in case anyone cares, this is Endless Summer. I'm not, obviously not sponsored, although how wonderful to be sponsored. Like if I were sponsored by Endless Summer, I would say, please send me 25 Bloomstrucks ASAP. Uh, but I really like this, uh, this Endless Summer variety because it's been hybridized to bloom both on new and old wood. So you get twice as many blooms because you get um, blooms on last year's growth. And then they'll also send out shoots and give you blooms on this year's growth. And I just love that purple. And this section here is mainly to be uh, whites and greens with the purples and blues. So the other one in that same uh, family, what is it called again? Endless Summer. Again, I'm not sponsored, but hey, if anyone wants to sponsor me from Endless Summer, please send me some straight away because I'm your biggest cheerleader. Um, in fact, I've even, <laughs> I've, been, I've been at the garden center and as you do, you start talking flowers with people. And I have been in the hydrangea section, and others will be looking for hydrangeas. Some will be new. And whenever there's anyone new in the hydrangea section and ask my opinion, I always tell them about this because I let them know that the uh, traditional, um, like the Nico Blue type uh, mop head hydrangeas, you know, you have to be careful how you um, trim them because they only bloom on old wood. But these, look at that. I think this is paniculata, I believe that's what it's called when a hydrangea blooms just with the outer flowers like this, like delicate little fairies. And then the center stays almost like a broccoli. It's a shame to call this beautiful flower a broccoli. But now just to show you how our soil affects the hydrangeas. This endless summer is advertised as twist and shout as this pink, but no, 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 not in our soil. In our Cape Cod soil, it is brilliant blue. In fact, it's too bad that in the camera it looks a little bit more purple, but while the other ones were truly purple, this is like a beautiful blue, almost an indigo blue. And I'm trying to add more to the shade border. As you can see, I have a, I think this is a uh, Japanese painted fern maybe, but see, I love those, the dark with that color. It's really pretty. Oh, and then I think I mentioned this in another video. This is another Endless Summer, which I just tried because I, I heard it, was, it will bloom pink even if you do have our type of soil. Let's see, what is it called? It is also in the summer. It's called Summer Crush. Now that color, for me, I tend to not like reds. Um, I don't mind some vibrant pinks, but that's a bit on the bright side for my tastes. But I've been happy with it so far because I think it can't get quite as bright as it would like to because we still have that soil that will lean towards a blue hydrangea. So I, I really am happy with this. I'm not sure if I want this color to stay here, although look how pretty it is with that hookah. But if it does stay here, if not, I could move it to our little cottage, our little cottage on Cape Cod. So, well, it looks like the weather is starting to turn. So I guess beachcombing and hydrangea looking is what is going to happen today. Oh, just a quick update from the other day when I planted, interspersed the coleus in my little shade garden. See, doesn't it look pretty? Now, obviously it still needs to be mulched and I'm gonna add more flowers. But don't you think that the, uh, they're just random planting mixed in with the ivy and the evergreens and the hostas that the deer have not found. In front of my wood stacked wall and my coveted stump that we got from our big dig, because this is going to become a stumpery, and a Victorian stumpery, and there's a little fern down there. I think it's called a mammoth fern, I forget. Um, anyway, I think that's gonna be it for today because it looks like the rain is coming. Well, I think that's going to do it for today because it does look like the rain is going to come. So we did some beachcombing and we looked at my hydrangeas and I think that's enough for a day. Again, I'm only, I think, six or seven days into daily vlogging and I really, really want to do it daily. So I'm going to try to do that. So I'm trying to organize my day so that I have time to do that as well as still do my artwork and take care of the house and make my plans for the things we need to do for the house, such as getting the water finished and the carpet has to be removed at some point. That may have to wait till autumn. So 
Yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, and just as an update, our little bird still is in this urn with the ivy. I'm pretty sure she, she's a little nuthatch. I need to figure out my macro settings on my camera because I cannot get zoomed in close enough. But they're the da darlingest, tiny, I mean, they're like jelly beans. The tiniest little eggs, so pretty. Um, so hopefully we get some chicks. We'll see. Um, oh, and speaking of chicks, I have ordered more quail's eggs for hatching because we had a sad story. I think I'll share that on another vlog. But anyway, new quail eggs are on the way. So when they get here, it'll be another 20 days and we'll have some new quails to share. So, all right, well, that's it for me here at Bunny Hall, making a life by the sea. Uh, thank you for joining me if you are here. If not, thank yourself for making a video log. So thanks again from Bunny Hall, making a life by the sea.